Hi everyone. Well, today I'm making mugs and mugs with thumb rests. And here's one <clears throat> that's pretty much finished. I'm just letting it dry. And here are the cylinders for a couple more. And there's some more over there on the shelf. Right here, I have some handles laid out to put on those mugs. We're gonna look at thumb rest today. And so I will roll some balls out and I have a cup right here that's just an old cup that I stick things in in the studio. And we're gonna use that for a handle and demonstrate some of the ways of making um, thumb rests. So roll out a little snake. Don't make it too thin. I like to have my thumb rests start out about the size of maybe a medium-sized marble. So let's see. Here's So there's, there's my little marble. I'm gonna make several of these in case I mess one up. I'll make as many as I have clay for here. So I just start out with the ball. See, that one's a little bit bigger. And not all of my cups are the same size. My mugs tend to determine, even though I use the same amount of clay to start out with, sometimes some of them end up being elegantly slender and some of them are chunky and some of them are other things <laughs> but they're all beautiful and I don't have trouble selling them people tend to like things that don't match just as well as they do things that do match um, <clears throat> if they don't match Everybody can tell which one is their own because it'll have unique characteristics. That would be good. Huh? So I'm going to use this this handle and oh, sorry about the noise. And I'm going to mash this little guy on here. So if I was putting this, if this was a mug that I was building, I would pretty much just put that put that little ball on there and then get it shaped well and you know you could leave it like that I don't have that up far enough you could leave it like so or you can smear it and I like to smear it down into the handle like that so that it's pretty much a little thumb rest for you to use So you can, you can mash this into the handle any way you want to, as long as your thumb is going to end up in the place that you want it to end up. Something like this. That would be a comfortable. This is about a two-finger two handle. Um, there's also uh, the possibility of let's see let's get that one of making the little making the little thumb rest go the opposite direction so you can stick it on there and mash it that way so that you have a profile go in the opposite direction. Now I'm not going to be real neat about that because I think you get it. So your thumb rest could go like that. You could still use it like that. You could also put your thumb shoot. See. You could also put your thumb on top of this, on top of it. So you could mash that try it out while it's still malleable and you could have a thumb rest that goes like that so 
which direction your thumb rest goes could be a lot different for different folks. You could also put one on to the side so that you could, and, and you really just form these things just holding them. But this, that could be a nice little thumb rest. And see, it's kind of off, off to one side. I think that for aesthetics, I like the one that goes like this. Of course, my, this, this little handle is a little bit thin to be doing this kind of a thumb rest on, but it'll it'll work on any. Kind of like it to bend up and do like that and have a little depression right there. I like that little I like to have a little depression there so that it really looks like your thumb should go in there. And I like the profile of that one. You could peel peel this back just a bit to make it have some more curve. You could even make it longer. I'll show you. Make your piece of clay more like a little bullet and stick that on there. Do a little forming of it to get it into some kind of a shape before you stick it on there. And then you've got something that sort of curls backwards like that. You could add a little piece of uh, interest right there, a little, little ball. Depends on how fancy you want to make it. This is harder to do when you're trying to stay on camera because you have such a limited uh, frame area. Oh, oh. And you have to keep it in that frame area so that you can see what's going on. And you have to be careful not to get in your own light or produce a shadow or whatever. So let's see if that's going to work. I think I'm going to go with this one. Now I just need to clean it up a little bit. Maybe a lot. <laughs> some of them go on so easy. And some of them you just have to be patient with it. real patient sometimes. So I'm going for a particular profile. I like for my handles to just come straight off. I don't like the big loop that goes on there. Sometimes you can have a cup or a mug or whatever you want to call it that is so, the handle is so huge that when you grab hold of it, with all four fingers, sometimes you you grab hold of that handle and the mug just tends to fall down because it's the handle is way too big for the mug. 
Now, one thing you always want to do when you're doing a mug and you've shoved a handle onto the side of it is re-round it before you let it go over there and, and put it on the dry rack. You just want to make sure you put it back to round on the top. It looks nicer when people are shopping because when you have them all side by side, you can really tell if something's out around. So when you're doing this, you just place that little ball on here and you just take your thumb and you smear it on just like I did on the mug uh, that was fired. And I really think that that is the best way to do it. Now there's the sideways profile on that one. I kind of like it when the, on the mug that I did the sample on, I had the little ball out here. I think I like it a little further up. I think just aesthetically it is more pleasing. And, you know, testing these, when you grab hold of it, let's grab it with the other, let's grab one over here. When you grab hold of it, then you definitely have a place for your thumb to go. Fits my thumb perfectly. So, um, anyway, this is what I mean about having them all rounded. Uh, when they're sitting, when you've got mugs out on a table when they're all for sale, uh, you've got people looking down at them usually, and then they'll pick it up and look at it and hold it and everything. Um, and so when that, when that happens and they're all in there together, you can really see the ones that are not round. And you don't want to have those out there. You're going to put those on a markdown or a a pile of shards because uh, those are not the ones you want to put forward. So, but these are all round and sometimes I forget to round one and that's how they get mixed up in the, in the ones that are not round and they usually end up out in the yard in the garden as shards. Here's another example of how people look at them when they're buying them. These are all these are actually in a box right now, but when you have them sitting out on the table, uh, you usually have them all jammed up together like this, and people really can spot the ones that are not round. And as you can see, it looks like these are all pretty, pretty round.